all these accounting ratios in your course can be classified into four categories. Number one, liquidity ratio. Number two, solvency ratio. Number three, activity ratios. Number four, profitability ratios. First of all, we'll discuss about the meaning of liquid in accountancy. It's not the same as you have learned the meaning of liquid in your science class. Actually, in accountancy, liquid means cash or capability of being converted into cash. So, in accountancy, short-term assets are more liquid as compared to long-term assets. So, now it's a new thing, short-term and long term. In accountancy, short term means up to one year, long term means more than one year. First of all, we'll start solvency ratios. Actually, solvency ratios tells about the solvency of the company or firm. Solvency means whether this firm is capable of paying its loans or not. And this solvency can be of two types, short-term solvency and long-term solvency. Short-term solvency means whether the firm is capable of paying its short-term loans or not. And long-term solvency means whether the firm is capable of paying its long-term loans or not. So before we go for this ratio, we must be clear about the short-term liabilities and short-term assets, which are called current assets and current liabilities. Current assets means short-term assets. Current liability means short-term liabilities. You know, in accountancy, short-term means only up to one year. And the formula of this current ratio is current assets upon current liabilities. This current ratio tells about the short-term solvency of the firm. Now we'll explain what are the current assets and what are the current liabilities. Current liability means the liabilities which are to be paid within one year. For example, creditors. Creditors means the firms or the persons from whom we have bought the goods on credit basis. Naturally, if we have bought the goods on credit basis, we are supposed to pay one month, two months, three months, not five years. So creditors is always current liabilities. BP, BP means bills payable. Uh, you may call it promissory notes. Bills or promissory notes are always for a few months, one, two, three months, not for years. Bank overdraft. Bank overdraft means this is the liability that you have to clear generally within one month. And provision for tax means if the tax is due, means it's due to pay to the government, you can't retain it for years. And short-term loans and advances. Unclaimed dividend. Unclaimed dividend is the when the company pays dividend and for any reason the shareholder is not able to claim it. That is unclaimed dividend and this you have to pay within one year. You can't take more than one year. So these are the items which are treated as current liabilities. Current liabilities means that you have to pay within one year. Now we'll talk about current assets. Current assets means any asset in the form of cash or expected to be converted into cash within one year. Cash itself is a current asset, the most liquid assets. Bank balance. Bank balance is also treated just like cash nowadays. And sundry debtors. Sundry debtors means the debtors, our customers, to whom we have sold the goods on credit basis. Naturally, we expect the money within one or two months, not years. Bills receivable, it should be net. Bills receivable means 
when we receive the bills of exchange from our customers. They are supposed to be encashed within one year. And short-term investments. Sometimes we have got spare money in our firm and we invest it in a short-term period. It means they are short-term invests. They can be converted into cash within one year. Stock. Any type of stock, whether it's raw material or finished stock or work in progress, I mean to say semi-finished, all types of stocks are current assets because we expect that the stocks lying with our firm is expected to be sold within one year means it will be converted into sales or cash within one year. Prepaid expenses, they are also current assets and short-term loans. If we have given loan to somebody on short term, naturally we'll recover it within one year. That will be treated as current assets. Outstanding incomes, it means if we have earned something but by now we have not yet received the money. That is called outstanding income or income in area that will be treated as current assets. Or if we have paid any advance tax to government of India, that will be our current asset. So, current ratio is equal to current assets upon current liabilities. It is always expressed in pure ratio. Suppose in a firm, total current assets are 4 rupees 1 lakh and current liabilities are 4 rupees 1 lakh. So, the ratio will be 1 lakh upon 1 lakh means 1 lakh is to 1 lakh means 1 is to 1. It means the current ratio of the firm is 1 is to 1. And if you calculate the current ratio of some another firm, say B and company, and its current ratio is 2 is to 1. And if you calculate the current ratio of C and company, suppose it is 5 is to 1. So which one is the better? It means C and company has to pay 1 rupee and they have got 5 rupees in cash or almost near cash, I mean to say the current assets. So C and company will be more comfortable in paying current liabilities. So far this B and company is concerned, it will also be comfortable in paying its current liabilities. But A and company can never be comfortable in paying current liabilities because it's one is to one. Generally, it is assumed that two is to one is the best ratio. If the current ratio is less than 2 is to 1, it means if any current asset fail, means you are not able to recover the money from debtors in cash or you are not able to sell your stock in cash in time, then you won't be able to pay your current liabilities in time. So 2 is to 1 is the best ratio. If it is too high, just like C and company, that is 5 is to 1, it means the assets 
of the company are tied up in current assets. So this company is advised to go for the fixed assets. So if the funds are tied in current assets too much, that's not a good indication. One thing more, suppose in your examination, you might be asked whether this transaction will improve current ratio or not. For example, it is said if a firm pays off its current liability, what will be the effect on current ratio? Whether it will improve or decline? So the best way is you take your current ratio as 2 is to 1. For example, the current assets of the firm are 20,000 and current liabilities are 10,000 rupees. Means the ratio is 2 is to 1. If a payment is made to the current liability, so what will happen? Suppose creditors are paid for rupees 1000. So what will happen? Previously, we had current assets of rupees 20,000. Cash of rupees 1000 is gone and the remaining current assets are 19,000. And one thing more, our creditors will be reduced by rupees 1000. It means current liabilities will be reduced by rupees 1000. So new ratio will be 19,000 upon 9,000 means 19 is to 9 or I can say 2.1 is to 1. In this way, we have seen that previously our current assets were double of current liabilities. Now it's more than double. So if any payment is made to current liabilities, it improves the current ratio. Now the question is, what will be the effect of payment of current liability? Whether our current ratio will improve or decline? So the best way is, take the assumption that previously current assets were for rupees 20,000 and current liabilities for 10,000 rupees and the ratio was 2 is to 1. Payment of current liability, it means some long term loan etc. So what will happen? Previously current assets were for rupees 20,000 and you have paid cash out of rupees 1,000. In every question I will assume the figure of 1,000 rupees. So the new current assets will be 19,000 and previously the current liabilities were for rupees 10,000. If you make the payment to non-current liabilities, there will be no effect on current liabilities. So the new ratio will be 1.9 is to 1 because the new current assets are 19,000 and new current liabilities are 4 rupees 10,000. So in this way, the current ratio will decline. What will be the effect on current ratio if the goods are purchased on cash? Suppose the current ratio is 20,000 is to 10,000 means 2 is to 1 and the firm buys goods for 1,000 rupees. So current assets will be decreased by rupees 1,000 because you have paid cash and current assets will increase by rupees 1,000 because stock has come to the firm. It means the current assets will remain as it is 20,000 and current liability will remain as it is. So new ratio will be 20,000 is to 10,000 means 2 is to 1. So if the firm purchases goods on cash, there will be no effect on current ratio. Suppose furniture is purchased on credit for 2 months. So what will be the effect on current ratio? So again we are going to take the same assumption. 
which is very convenient for us. At present, the current ratio is 20,000 is to 10,000, means 2 is to 1. If the furniture is purchased for rupees 1,000 on credit, what will happen? We will receive only furniture, so naturally it's not going to affect our current assets. But we have increased the creditors by rupees 1,000, means creditors for the fixed assets. That is rupees 1,000 because we have to pay rupees 1,000 to the vendor within two months. So new current liability will be 11,000 and new current assets will be 20,000 rupees. So the new ratio will be 20 is to 11, means 1.9 is to 1. In this way, the current ratio will decline. So what will happen if the furniture is purchased on credit for three years? Means you have bought the furniture, but the payment will be made after three years. Again, the same assumption. Our current ratio is 20,000 is to 10,000, means 2 is to 1. Our current assets are for rupees 20,000 and current liabilities are for 10,000 rupees. When we buy the furniture, it won't affect our current assets because furniture is a non-current assets. And it's not going to affect our current liabilities because this liability will be paid after three years. Means we have created a long term liability, not short term liability. So the current assets will remain 20,000. Current liabilities will remain 10,000. So new ratio will be 2 is to 1. It means there will be no effect on current assets. So if fixed assets are purchased, it doesn't affect our current ratio.